have you guys seen this app and environment how it looks like and what are the suits we have can you repeat that ravi which i am working right now uh huh um develop the using app in so okay. the suit side uh, different uh, different objects all that okay okay Okay, so Vijay, do you know about it? I mean, what Appian is, how it looks like? Uh, yeah, very little, Ravi. Yeah, okay. very little. Yeah. All right, all right. So I guess people are other people have joined. Let me see. Hey, Murli, hi. Okay. Fine. Uh, okay, so let me show you first that you know uh, what are the suits are available and what is the use of each suit. So the first suit that I have that we have in Appian. is called tempo okay so this is the first shoot you see the if you see the browser right it says uh, the appian url and then shoot and then the first thing is the tempo so tempo is basically for the basic user the end user who will be using this application right whatever you have built and it has five sub tabs available so the first tab is the news feed where you can see if any a uh, news has been published related to your application right so you will be seeing all those news here yeah. second uh guys can you go on mute if i'm getting an echo thanks okay and the second sub uh, option is that task right so suppose if there are any task is available for your application like suppose if you have built some task right like suppose someone has given some uh uh assign some task to you right which is which need your approval then you will get your task listed here on, under this tab and the third is that records so the records are like for your application if you have built any record you know uh so we'll see what the record is then you can see all your uh, record available within this tab and then the fourth one is the reports so similar the records if you have any report built for your application you will be seeing your all your report under this uh this tab and the fifth one is an action like suppose if you want to initiate a new action like suppose for your application if you want to uh, trigger a new action for your uh, for for say like suppose you are using the um leave management system right and you want to apply the leave right so you you can come to this action tab and then you can uh, like for example we have uh, lms apply leave so if you click on this apply leave you will be getting an interface for you where you need to go and search for employee and apply the leave okay so this is what we have the first shoot available the five sub tasks are there the second shoot that we have is that and how to move to the other shoots like if you have the designer access or you if you have the system administrator access then you can navigate from here and then you can say uh, appian designer so this is the second shoot that is uh, useful i mean this is basically for the developers where you go and you actually design your applications you write your code you create your all your objects and all okay so this is a second shoot here also we have five types sub tabs so first is the application so the application is like you know if you create any like for your application you may need a, a list of objects to be created right like there will be 100 200 300 objects for your application so you need to uh, collect all those objects into one package right so here we create the our application packages so this is a new application if you click so uh, uh you can see uh, the package has been created the second sub tab is that you know uh, it's like uh, all the available objects in your application and um when i say application tab right it's not like in one in app environment you can only create one application you can create n number of applications right so like see if you see here there are 11 applications is already available within this within this environment the second sub tab is that objects like here it will list you the entire object available for all of the applications like for like example we have 11 applications so what are the objects that are available there you can search it by name and by this object as well third sub tab is that uses where you actually create you can create an uses and you can see the what are the uses are available within the system uh you can see that the fourth tab is that monitoring the monitoring tab is used to monitor the Uh, running instances like suppose whenever you create a process model right so how the process model is behaving in the back end what where it has been completed till now and what's the data we have it right if you do anything if you want to do anything any uh, monitoring kind of thing in your process model you can come and you can do it from here and then last sub tab is for deployment 
uh, if you are you need to deploy some object from one application to another environment, then you can come and you can do it here. All right. So this is about the second shoot, which is a designer, and and this is basically for the developers. All right. Now the third important shoot is that we have called cloud database. So this is a cloud database where you actually build your tables. So you know uh, for your application, if you need any any tables, any view, stored procedures. Uh, triggers you, you come and you can design it here. This is the inbuilt data. Uh, this is the inbuilt database uh, for Appian, which is the server which is in the MariaDB. The front end it will look like your MySQL, uh, but the server is the MariaDB. Okay, but it's not like that. You can only connect with this uh, inbuilt database. You can also connect your uh, Oracle, SQL Server, third party, any of these, right? So you can connect with all those data as well in your Appian. The fourth suit that we have is uh, that is called admin console. So this is for the system administrator users where you basically set your branding of your application like which color you want based on your company code and like if you you can also do some file upload restrictions like what are the type you want, what are the file types you want user to upload on the system. You can do all those kind of restrictions from here. Uh, what start page you want to set to the user you can you can do all those things from here. Right. Um, just one second. Huh? Okay. Okay. Um, so I mean, you know, uh, like if you have any LDAP authorization, so everything you can configure the system and from here. Cool. So this is what we about the uh, system uh, admin console, and then uh, we have one more. Uh, I mean, shoot available that is called system logs. The system logs is basically is for uh, to check the log. What has go if something has gone wrong in your system, then you can definitely come here and you can check uh, the associated file to see the logs. Okay, and if some some suppose some object has been deleted, so you can find everything in, in this system logs here. So this is these are the four shoots that we have in uh, uh, in Appian. Uh, we mostly need the three like uh, the tempo, the designer, and then the cloud cloud interface. Any questions? If you have any doubt, if you have, please ask. Guys. No questions. Uh, please be uh, interactive. Okay, uh, ask as number of questions. Don't think like I'll go through the video and then uh, I'll see. If you have any doubt, please uh, ask me now. Uh, the the quick question I have, Ravi, mm -hmm. is like, uh, so you said the database is usually a Mango database, right? And we can configure to um, connect. Uh, or interface with some other database as well. Uh, where where can we do that configuration to connect so that some config, other database? That configuration happens into the administrator console. The system and administrator user will be able to give you this connectivity. Uh, that if, if you go to the admin console and then uh, data sources. Here you can add your data sources. Okay, the system admin user will allow you will uh, give you these uh, the name of the data source and this username password of that particular data source it will be read and then once you provide all this information it will be uh, see you have like DB2, MariaDB, MySQL, Oracle. Okay, these are SQL Server and all. So once you provide username password you will be able to good to go to add the connection and it will be available within the system okay thanks Ravi all right um if no more questions then we'll proceed okay so this is what Appian looks like I mean this is what about the Appian uh, this is a tempo page where you basically do the, all your application. So there's a one more thing called sites. Uh, we'll come. We'll talk about the sites, but uh, I don't want to jump directly to the site because you must know about the um, 
Appian, the first interface that you will interact with the Appian Tempo. Okay. Okay. All right. So now, as we uh, we are thinking of uh, uh, designing an application, right? So uh, I have something in my mind is called like inventory management system. So we can have the uh, uh, we will develop an application around the inventory management system where we can you know place an order for the inventory. Uh, it will go for an approval, and then if, when it get approved, uh, there will be some status called dispatch, and then everything will uh, cover this basically Appian project. Okay. All right. So the first thing that we, uh, we when we talk about the application right designing, so what should be the name of our application that we are going to design, right? So uh, the application name should be uh, what we are giving is called. So we click on the new application. Okay, let's start with the new application. Then, so we click on the new application, and then it will say, uh, okay, how you want to create your application, right? You know, if you want to create it from scratch, or if you want to uh, some using some builder, and if you want to create a, a builder full. So what this is about, you know, if you have all your data model ready, if you have everything is ready for you, like uh, your tables, your views, and then store position everything if you have ready with you if you have the data with you then you can create from this uh, builder and all right but right now we are going to create this application from the scratch so we don't have any information so what we will do is that we will create this application from the scratch and then we will give the name so the name shop uh, what we are thinking is that inventory management system so whenever you give the name right this app Appian is suggesting you some prefix. This prefix we will be using for all the time. So IMS is the prefix uh, which is looks good. So we will using this IMS prefix for your our application. I will put some good description of this one. We'll say um, application for inventory management. Okay, and we are not going to generate this groups and folder for uh, by default. Uh, I want you to know how the group and folders can created, and then um, you know what is the use of this. So I'm not going to create this groups and folder by default. So I'll just uncheck this checkbox and I'll say create. Okay, so we'll come to this part. Uh, we, we'll talk the, in the next uh, uh, ten minutes. What is this uh, warning? Why the, we are getting this warning detected, and what is the user and group? Okay, so this is how we create an application, right? You see this whenever we create an application, it will come. Okay, this is a go back button, by the way. Okay, so you see this application has been created. If you click this application, you will come to this screen, and then you will see, right, there are certain things. We have objects, monitoring, and deployments as the things we have seen outside of this uh, uh, application. You see objects, monitoring, and deployments, right? So this objects mounting and deployment is for the entire application but if you go inside the application this objects mounting and deployment will be belongs to this particular application only so this is the uh, application uh, you know when you click on create application this is the how it is screen will look like all right and then you see there are new uh, when you click on the new tab then it will give you the entire list of the objects that you need to create your application uh, Within Appian, all right. So these are the list of the objects that we have here. Okay. So any any doubt to create create an application? Nope. So no question. Why this is red? Why our is gray? I think uh, it is deployed one and one is non deployed one. No, it's not related to deployment. It's a uh, the red one is the published application you see it's a published when i when we say published application like you know in appian you can have unpublished application as well but uh the published what is the difference between published application and unpublished application is that if you are going to create any action on your uh on your application right like suppose the action that i can like apply leave right that is a one nothing but an action so when once you create an action, you need to publish your application so that that action will be available for the end users. Okay, so for that purpose, we need to publish our application. So right now we haven't created anything 
just a blank application so we have not published it but we will publish it in some time okay so that's what the difference between published application and unpublished application it, it will come to your question like interview so you can tell them you know published application will allow user to trigger an action unpublished application you cannot trigger any action that will not be available basically okay so this is what about the application right now every it department every project every application needs to be secured right i mean it's, we cannot let it be open for everyone right we need to secure this application so to secure this app sec, uh, provide the security to the application we have an uh, um, uh, an object called groups so we are going to secure our application using the groups okay so let's create the application i mean groups here so we'll go to the new and we'll say uh, group so in in admin environment the the minimum group uh, you required is two are the two groups one is the administrator and one is the all users okay so first of all we are going to create the administrator user group so i'll say imsc this is the prefix that i've been provided for you if you wanted you can change as well but let's it's a ims inventory management system short part of uh, inventory management system so let's ims i'll say administrators okay so admin group for ims application so this ims administrators is going to be the restricted group and then nobody can see uh, what users are available in it so what we will say uh, it's, it's visibility is a restricted only members and admins can see this okay so this is the ims administrator group i'll say create okay and here also it's saying uh, I mean, how to what, how you want to save this i mean secure this group as well so we'll come to this one later and then you see this one object has been created called ims administrators right the same way we will create another group that is named as ims all users okay hold all groups and users for ims okay now this is going to be our parent group right so there is no parent group here so ims all users group and then it will be i'll say it's not it will be visibility as a uh, personal so only admin users can see this one uh public if you say the public you can change this one to members can see each other so in all users i want to member to see each each uh, i mean whoever are available in this so ims all users group i'll say create okay now if talk about the security so what we will do is that you know if you go to the ims administrator and then i'll say security i'll say add users and group i'll say ims administrator and then ims all users so uh, sorry it will require only ims administrator and then administrator role okay save changes so this is secure now now for this all users right you see all users in within a group you can even add other groups and also the users so right now we are going to add this uh, group to this one so we have group where so i'll say ims administrator so ims administrator group i'm adding to so this ims all user group okay so now if you go here you'll see those these two groups are being created and if i ask you which one is the parent group can you tell me which one is the parent group in the, in these two admin group no see administrator is a separate group right it's an individual group but ims all users has the administrator group within it okay right so this is this is our uh, parent group okay application I mean, sorry. I mean, IMS all users is my parent group. Okay. okay. Now, as we have we have created these two group, right? We can also now secure our application. So let's go back, select this application, and then go to the security, and then we'll we'll say IMS administrators, and then IMS all users. So administrator will have the administrator access and all users will have the viewer access we'll save this so now our 
environment is also secured our objects will be also secured when we start creating it okay so this is how we create the groups we will need there are two kind of groups in the in, in a, any application so one one is that which you will require to secure your application second is that which you will use for your uh, task assignment purpose like you know i want to assign this task to, uh, to set of managers so those kinds of groups will also needed into the applications we will we'll see that one more by one so any question any doubt For IMS administrator, you went to security and you did add IMS administrator again, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just uh, it's a security. I mean, we are trying to secure our groups as well. So even if you don't do that, that is fine because now our, our application is secure. But it's always to have this. So we haven't this for this happen uh, all users, right? So uh, say here, I'll say IMS administrators. So yeah. So it means like only IMS administrators uh, would would have access to this application. Yes, only IMS administrator will be allowed uh, will be able to delete this one basically and modification and deletion, right? So only IMS administrator users can do it. None none other users will be able to do the same thing. Okay. Okay. So this is how we just secure our application. We created the application. Uh, we created two groups to secure our application. Any other questions? I don't want to do a lot of things today as well, uh, you know, on the same day. So we'll we'll progress step by step. Is that clear? Yes, Ravi. Okay. Cool. All right. So now, once we created our application, we created our group to secure our application. So now we need to create our objects, right, for our application. What are the objects we will need it to our application? All right. So we'll come to that but in appian we create uh, many things like you know the we create expression rules we create interfaces we create constants if you see this in the new we, these all are the objects that we have to, which will be needed for our application support right so these are the objects we have it so you know this also needs to be uh, categorized in, in in one thing right i mean we cannot be creating this and then saving it anywhere right so to categorize this all these objects into one, we create the folders, all right? So, we, what we will do, we will create a folder. So, we'll say um, folder. Now, we have multiple type of folder. We have rule folder, we have process model folder, we have document folder, and we have knowledge center. We will talk about each one of them. Let's uh, first we talk about the rule folder. So, in the rule folder, basically you can set. I mean, you can uh, save your expression rules. You can save your constant interface um, and then expression rules uh, interface. Yeah, these are the things you can save in your rule folder. So what we can do is we can say IMS uh, all rules. Okay, this is a folder uh, I'm going to create, which is having all rules. I'll just give hold all the associated rules for our for ims application right now this is going to the parent folder so i'm not selecting any parent folder i'll say create okay now the security so add users and group i'll say ims administrator and then ims all users and administrator will be have the admin access so i'll just say so you see one folder has been created all right and right now in this folder we have nothing okay now what we need we need one more folder i'll say uh, folder and the name i'll give ims um, interface rule okay hold ims interface and now here I can set the parent folder. So I'll say IMS all rules. Okay, I'll say create. So now you see that it didn't ask for me the security. Why it didn't ask for the security? Because it's now parent is the IMS all for rules, right? If you go inside this one, now you see IMS interface rule is, is within it, right? Now, what about the security? 
So if you select this one, let me show you first uh, the IMS all rules. If you select this one and then go to the security, it will show you the security that we have created. Administrator is admin and viewer is the all users. Right now, if you go to this one, interface rule and set up the security, it, it also has the same. Why? Because it is inheriting the security from the parent. Okay, so we don't have to set an object security to each and every object. We can also inherit the security from the parent folders. All right, so we have created the interface folder. Now let's go and create one more folder, uh, which will be IMS uh, constants, hold all the constants for IMS application. The parent is IMS all rules. So done. IMS constant is created. And then one more we need. I'll say IMS uh, expression rules. Hold all the expression rules for IMS application. And again, it is going to IMS all rules as a parent. Let's say create. Now we have created five folders, but this is the parent. If you go inside this, you will be seeing all those uh, folders are available here. Okay. So any question, any doubt for this? Um, creating folders and all. No doubt why we have created these folders, this all four folders. So this is what, you know, if we, if you remember while creating this application, right, while, while creating this new application, and these are something, this checkbox, generate groups and folders to secure and ob organize objects, right? This, if we have let it be this uh, checked, then all these objects would have been created automatically. But I just wanted to, let you guys know what is the use and what the purpose I haven't created yet. Okay, so this is how we create the groups and this is how we create the folders. Okay, no question. All right, now let's discuss about the IMS application. You know, what are the objects we will be requiring for this application? You know, so uh, one second, let me open the file. Hmm. Okay, so let's see decide the what are the attributes we will need requiring for I mean you know for our data model. So first of all, uh, we we will need the first table that is called IMS inventory table, right? So in that inventory table, we will have something called uh, IDs the item name, item quantity, the description, item type, item price and is available or not, and their type and then uh, like, you know, the primary key and all everything, right? So this is the one table attribute that we need to have. So, and it, it's supposed to have some data available for it. So user, whenever user can go and they can try to search, they can see this, uh, you know, and they can see the available items within the system and then they can uh, select and then they can place an order, right? So this is what we need, that item inventory. Uh, if you guys think about any more column that we need, please tell me. These are the items table, right? I IMS inventory. Okay, so these are the, uh, the uh, columns that we need. Let's go and create one table in our system for this one, okay. So we, we go to our uh, append channel and then we navigate to the cloud database and then we'll say new because we need a new table and then I will give the name as IMS underscore inventory, okay. Uh, so we have ID column that will be number integer and then it will be auto increment and it's a primary key, fine. 
and then we have item name that's gonna be where care let's say 50 characters long initially it can be null all right um, and then what else we have so we have item quantity item description so we'll have item description it's gonna be where care i'll say 200 characters long can be initially it will be null and then we have item quantity let it be number integer and then let's say we don't have to the size and then how many will left with uh, three more so we'll say add three more columns click on go then we'll come here and then say item type item price so we'll say item price that is gonna be float and then item type it's gonna be where care and then we have is available it's going to be tiny int so we will be using boolean for this one in appian so we are going as a tiny int all can be null initially so i'll just put check this checkbox and we'll say save uh valid length for okay here item type we'll say 20 characters long let's say save so this table is created now for us okay so if you go here and search for ims you see this inventory table is created so right now there is no data so um the table is empty we'll put the data within it and then we'll do the search and then we'll try to find the available uh, data to our app and we'll see how to pull the data from this table how to display the data and then how to make selection and all so we will see in our uh, later part so any questions till now if you have guys uh, uh, for this uh, application how we build this application you know and how do we secure our application what are the groups what are the folders we have created and the table that we discuss about today the database um, and dissenter the database mm -hmm. and dissenter these are d these are the two different suit right yeah, how these two different be, yeah how these will get connected meaning if i create if we create yes, a yes 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 that we will yeah. see i mean how we will pull the data from database to our app and designer we'll see that thing i mean because we will require that data to be displayed here right so we'll see that part okay sure all right guys so uh, i'm guessing uh, as i have a uh, requested uh, i mean requested by the trainer um, training organization that a couple of more will join from next day onwards so uh, let's uh, let's stop here you know um, meanwhile uh, uh, have you guys created your append credentials uh, i mean in your append community no no ravi no okay uh, and also in the app community you, you can get your free edition of the development environment where you can go and actually develop your applications right so please share your uh, email address or, or the numbers to, to the uh, organizer okay and ask them to create the whatsapp group where i can forward you all those details where, uh, where you need to create your app and community credentials and how to get your uh, free designer environment where you can go and practice your things if you not have already okay okay if you are if you are with that an organization so you can use your organization's uh, email address uh, if not you can use your personal email address as well for your uh, appen community uh, you know this uh, credentials all right quick question on that ravi like yeah. if if i'm mm -hmm. using my uh, if i'm using my personal id uh, mm -hmm. it will be expired within 15 days or 30 days right and yeah, and i have to yes. extend it again so i can I can similar like that. I can I can extend it uh, in number of times, right? Yeah, you can extend a number of times. But uh, see, not only the uh, I mean, see, community address it won't ex uh, expire, but the free demo environment that will get expired in 15 days. If you are not working in three to four days itself, the append demo environment will be uh, disabled for you. 
so if you are keep practicing daily basis uh, it will be enable for long as much as you want but if you like suppose not working for five four to five days it will go disable okay okay so uh, ask them to i will ask them to create a group for you guys and then you know they will add your name and i mean number to that whatsapp group and i will share you the uh, required information on that group okay also you you will require to share your email address so they can share the uh, recording videos to you all right sure. okay all right okay guys then uh, thanks for joining today let's connect tomorrow and then uh, we'll start the actual coding today we just see the structures how this container can be created and how we uh, secure our container uh, and then we'll see how to start pulling the data from the database and then display on the other interface and everything basically we'll start our actual development all right it's going to be a similar link which we need to connect tomorrow as well ravi yes it's, it's same, link. same link yeah if okay. there is any changes they will let you know well in advance okay. yeah thanks okay ravi. guys